Hello everyone. So in our previous video, we discussed about the data driven concept and how we can separate our test data from the test script. In our previous video, we deal only with single set of test data. Now assume that you have multiple set of test data. So here I have updated my Excel sheet, which has four different set of test data. Now we are going to extend our test script, which we wrote in our previous video to read all these four rows and supply in the test data one by one. So as we have four rows here, so we need to iterate from row one till row four. That means we need to create a loop which will read one row at a time and supply the test data. So at the instance, it will read from the row one, then second row, third row, and fourth row, so on. So I'm going to move this statement at the top as we need to get the information about the number of row which are present inside the Excel sheet. So first I will initialize my data source that is the test data for Excel file. Now once this is done, I will create a for loop. Now this for loop will read the row one by one. So I equal to one, I is less than, let me put a 10 and I plus plus, okay. So here I'm initializing the variable I with one because the starting index will be one and I is less than equal to so in the test data, there is a method which will give you the total number of rows. So get row number. So if you look at the documentation here, it says that get total rows of the test data. That means it will return as the total number of rows which is present inside our actual sheet. So I will use that method. And before that, let me print that value. So here I will use system dot out dot print ln row count okay and I'm going to move the entire piece of code inside this for loop okay and also once you have submitted a bug you need to click on new menu item so that it will again take you to the filing file a bug page or you can say enter bug page so after the verification i will click on new menu link so click find test object new menu item okay so when this loop will run initial value of i will be one so this that will represent the row one so here i'll put a comment saying when i equal to one that is equivalent to row one when i equal to two that is equivalent to row two and so on so here we are going to update our test script so instead of providing one as value we will provide i here so that represent the row number okay so it is done i am going to put a breakpoint over here and run the script in a debug mode and also let me close the excel So it has hit the debug point. So if you look at the console, the row count is four, which is precisely correct. So first of all, it will click on test ng product link, then provide the first set of test data. Then 
again click on test ng link provide the second set of test data then third set of data and then fourth set of data so so the execution is done okay now the problem with this approach is that at any moment if the script fails for any test any set of test data then it will not proceed with the further execution so for example for the first row the execution succeeded now for the second row there is some problem which caused the failure so Catalan Studio will stop the execution immediately and it will not proceed with the third and fourth set of test data. So let me reproduce that scenario. So here I'll just put a if condition if i is equal to 3 then assert dot fail. Okay, so I'm explicitly failing our test by using a assert fail statement. Okay, and let me rerun the script again in debug mode. So it has hit the debug, it has hit the debug point. This is for the first set of test data. Then second test of set of test data. And this is for the third set of test data. So if I do a step over, this will cause the failure. And as you can see here, the moment it encountered the failure, it stopped its execution and did not proceed with the fourth set of test data. So this is the drawback of using this approach. So in our next video, we are going to talk about a different approach for handling the multiple set of test data. And that's all for this video. Thanks for watching.